Hi, I'm Paul Sederner from the University of Michigan section of Plastic Surgery. It's my pleasure to have the opportunity to discuss the paper of Mike Longacre and colleagues from Stanford University. The paper is entitled, The Role of Stem Cells in Aesthetic Surgery, Fact or Fiction. Stem cells offer tremendous potential for the correction of traumatic defects and congenital anomalies. They have incredible potential for functional restoration of disease or defective tissue. Unfortunately, their use has been promoted by practices and corporations saturating the marketplace with unsubstantiated claims. This has put our patients at risk and created confusion in the marketplace as to what works and what doesn't work. This manuscript discusses what we know and what we don't know about stem cell therapy and investigates the business behind it. 14.6 million cosmetic procedures were performed last year. This is an $11 billion business. During this time, there's been a shift towards minimally invasive approaches. And with that shift, numerous practitioners outside of plastic surgery have entered into this arena. This has allowed the emergence of corporate medicine model, which has inundated the public with all sorts of claims of miraculous cures from various stem cell therapies and trademark machines. This has become a worrisome trend, and it's even more worrisome in the unregulated stem cell business. Practitioners begin treating conditions that they normally wouldn't see. For instance, a practitioner using adult stem cells to treat Parkinson's disease. There really is very little evidence as to the long-term sequelae of utilizing adult stem cells for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. This becomes problematic, particularly for a practitioner who normally would not care for a Parkinson's patient. Stem cell facelifts are another example which are, have begun to be performed by practitioners. Stem cell facelifts may be autogenous fat grafting cases, which are, or sometimes not even, um, augmented with ASCs. In these cases, the role of ASCs and the long-term outcomes haven't really been rigorously evaluated, so the role of the ASCs remains unknown. Certainly the patient may look better with lipofilling from the autogenous fat grafting, but the role of the ASCs is clearly undefined. It's true that ASCs in aesthetic surgery is in its infancy at this time, but we really have to carefully adhere to the strictest evaluation of outcomes and data before we make any determinations about their safety. For instance, platelet-rich plasma has frequently been utilized as a stem cell therapy. Unfortunately, in platelet-rich plasma, there are no stem cells. In fact, there are actually no cells. Platelets are not even cells, but they're fragments of cells, and in fact, don't even have a nucleus. And as such, without the presence of cells or stem cells, it certainly isn't a stem cell therapy and is definitely misleading to the public. Stem cells are also not without risks. We know that stem cells can undergo malignant transformation, or also turn into teratomas. We know during processing they become fragmented and become ineffective. We also know that infections can be transferred as a consequence of the development of stem cells utilizing fetal bovine serum. So it's quite clear that stem cells are not without risks. It's also clear though that stem cells will play a critical role in regenerative medicine and aesthetic surgery in the future. Plastic surgeons are definitely leading the way in developing techniques, approaches, and cellular therapies in the field of regenerative medicine. We must strictly adhere to the most rigorous scientific criteria, assessment of outcomes, and safe clinical practice. When we market cellular therapies, we have to honestly communicate with the patients to ensure that they know exactly what they're getting and what the outcomes might be, and above all, it's our responsibility to ensure that we protect our patients and provide the highest level of care possible. Lastly, while training our future plastic surgeons, we have to ensure that they also understand the importance of safe clinical practice and appropriate marketing to always ensure the most morally and ethically upright approach to medicine. I hope you enjoy reading this article. Thank you.